Hey, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're gonna to be going over the controversy between the Ableton Push and the MPC X. Um, we're not gonna be getting too deep into it. I just wanted to go over a few of the pros and the cons and you know why you might wanna choose one over another, all right? Um, but before we do, do me a favor, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out. I appreciate it, all right? Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay guys, so before we go any further, I just want to give you a little bit of a background uh, when it comes to my experience with the MPC X and an Ableton Push. Um, it's a little bit of story time, so just give me one minute. Um, let me just tell you how I, my journey started off when it came to sampling and stuff like that. Um, back in the day, I was a DJ. I had all the equipment I needed, and I, the next step after being a DJ was production, okay? In my eyes, it was production, okay? So back in the day, there was no internet like today, like you can just Google, I wanna make drum beats and boom, everything pops up online. Um, all the equipment, you know, and stuff like that. That didn't exist back then. Um, so the only thing that we had was to go into a place like uh, Sam Ash, Okay, guitar center, but I just happened to go into Sam Ash. So I walked into the uh, drum machine area because I'm thinking that's the first thing I need, the drum machine, you know, something like that. So uh, I walk into the drum machine er uh, area and I asked the salesman, I need a drum machine. Uh, what kind of music you do? And I told him I do house, you know, maybe some hip hop. And um, I said, I need a drum machine. Now, what I didn't say was, I want the best drum machine. And you don't go into a place uh, ready to spend money and then go, I want the best. They're going to give you the best and then some, okay? And overcharge you, basically, is what I'm saying. So I said, I need a drum machine, okay? He brings me to something like this. And this is, I believe it was this, because I didn't walk out the store with this. It was a Roland R70, okay? And I remember it looking like this because of these blue and red buttons. Once I saw this, I looked at it and I was like, there is no way in the world people are making uh, records with this. You know what I'm saying? Like people that have the money to buy drum machines are making records with this. And I'm like, this is something like a little, like, like you would use in a, a high school, something like that, recording studio or something like that. So I said, you don't have anything better? And I was like, something a little bit better than this? And he goes, oh man, that thing is pretty good. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, what's the best one you have? Once I said that, he brought me over to this, the Roland R8. And I looked at it and I was like, that's the best drum machine you have. He goes, yeah, that's the best one that's out there. And I was like, what the hell? And I was like, I didn't know any better. So I was like, okay, give it to me. It wasn't expensive. I said, all right, give it to me. And um, it, 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 it was about this big. That's all it was, about that thin. So I was like, all right, give it to me. I took it home. I had it a day, one day. And I brought it back the next day. And I was like, my friend, listen, there is no way in the world this is the best drum machine that's out there. There's just no way. Even if you took this drum machine, ran it through your studio gear, and manipulated it to sound good, it would take way too much. It just didn't make those that much sense in the 90s. It, it just didn't make sense to me. And I was like, there's no way that's the best drum machine out there. And he was like, well, you know, there is um, the SP-1200. And I was like, well, what's the SP-1200? And I'm sitting there looking at him like, well, why didn't you show me this before? Now I'm gonna pull up the SP-1200. He brings me to, uh, he didn't bring me, he didn't have it in the store. He went and showed me a picture of it um, and he was like, yeah, this is the SP-1200. And I was like, there, and I was looking at it like, that's more like it. You know, it looked more the part of a drum machine. You know, he showed it to me in a magazine so I could tell how big it was and so on and so forth. And he was like, yeah, that's SP-1200. He goes, we don't have it in the store. I'm gonna have to order it for you. I was like, that's fine. But I'm like, why wouldn't you show me this to begin with? I was like, I, I wanted a drum machine. The drum machines I was walking home with sounded like a drum set to me. I didn't like them at all. And 
uh, I did find out later on that the R8, some people were making techno records with it, but it didn't sound like, you know, a legit drum machine to me. It just sounded too like a much like a drum set. So I, I was I was kind of pissed off that he showed, you know, showed me those other two instead of this. And I'm thinking he sh he he uh sold me those two because that's what he had in the store just to get a sell instead of you know something like this. So he uh I got this ordered and it came in a few days, I don't remember how long, and uh, I went and picked it up, took it home. Um, I had something to do that day, so I actually started playing with it the next day. This was pretty cool, okay? It was pretty cool. When I was playing with it, I was like, okay, okay, I see how this works. But there was still something wrong. There was something wrong. And I was like, it doesn't, it, the sampling, and, and for those that you don't know, it didn't have a lot of sampling time in it at all. So you couldn't do, you couldn't sample loops. You could only sample hits. And to make um, uh, their sampling time longer, uh, what people used to do was slow down the machine to um, um, uh, extend the sampling time, so to speak. In other words, uh, I, I, I might be getting wrong because I didn't keep it long, but they would uh, record it fast and then play it back slow. And when they played it back slow, it would sound like real time. And instead of, I think it had two seconds of sampling or something like that, maybe two seconds per pad. I don't even think it had two seconds per pad. I just remembered the, the number two, but it had very little sampling time. So you can only sample kicks, snares, hats, that's it. You know, no loops, no nothing, no voices, forget about it. So I was playing with it and I had this, I'm going to say it was less than a week. I had this about three days, four days, and I didn't bring it back to the store, but I went back to the store and I said, my friend, I was like, I like it. It's much better, but uh, is it possible that there's something else out there? Because I'm like, it doesn't have a lot of sampling time and so on and so forth. I didn't need a lot of sampling time at the time. I didn't know what I was buying. So, but I just knew something wasn't right for the year that we're in, the music that was out. This just something wasn't right. Then the guy goes, well, there's an NPC. Now I'm not, I'm not, at this point, I'm not like, oh yeah, what's an NPC? I'm like, my man. I told you, after you showed me that first one, what's the best one you have? What's the best drum machine that you have? Because I wanted to see what the best was, and then I get back down from there. You know what I'm saying? If you start me off at the beginning, I'm going to be this piece of crap, this piece of crap, this piece, you know, before you get something good. So I'm like, I asked you for the best. What, what does the NPC look like? Now, before he took me to the magazine and showed me, it was a, a book they had, before he took me to the book and showed me the picture of it, I did see a machine in a rap video, okay? And I don't know what the machine was at the time. I didn't know what it was. They weren't be playing on it. It was just, they were just, the camera panned over it in a rap video. And the only thing that I saw in that uh, the only thing that I can remember of that picture was a screen about this size, and it was bright indigo blue. Bright indigo blue. When the guy brought me over to the magazine, uh, the brochure or whatever he had, it was a book of, of, of equipment that they didn't have that it was, a, uh, it was a book for Sam Ash, and it was just pictures of stuff they didn't have that they could order, okay? He brought me over to this and showed me the MPC 3000. I looked at this thing and I was like, that's what I saw in the rap video. There's the blue screen, there's the pads. That's what I saw in the rap video. And I was like, come on, man, come on. Why didn't you show me this to begin with? You know, and I'm wasting time with these other machines. Now I took them home, I, I read the manual. I'm trying to use them. I'm listening to them like, nah, that ain't it. And then when I had the SP-12, SP-12 was good if you were doing uh, hip hop, boom bap hip hop, but I was uh, uh, more into house at that time. So I just knew that this can't be it. It was, I, don't, I wasn't thinking SP-1200 and then a, sam uh, and a, and a sampler. I knew there had to be something better because if that SP-12 was the way it was and it was somewhat old, I'm like, come on, they have to have something better. And they did, it was the MPC-3000. He 
told me how much it was. I think it was like three thousand dollars. The SP twelve hundred, if I remember correctly, was twelve hundred dollars. I could be wrong. Could have been twenty seven. I don't remember. But he told me it was three thousand dollars, something like that. I was like, okay, I want it. I want it. So I brought back the SP twelve hundred, um, and they had to order this for me. It came like in a week. And when I got this thing, I was like, there we go. That's it right there. This thing was awesome. You can make beats with it. It was just, you could, you, of course you can make beats with it, but you can make beats with it easily. So this thing was the real deal. Okay. So I did have, uh, I started off with the MPC 3000. I uh, hooked it up uh, with, uh, with an extra uh, a SCSI drive. It was a, um, I forgot the name of the SCSI drives that they had hooked up to the back where you can take the cartridge out and put it back in. It wasn't a zip drive. It was the other one, the bigger one. I forget what it was called. Uh, maybe I'll put up. Uh, you know what? I can pull it up right now just to show you, you know, since we're here. I had something like the iOmega uh, Jazz Drive. Um, that was a little bit bigger than the zip drive. It uh, held more storage. But I believe that's what it was, an iOmega Jazz Drive, if I can find a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, it only held like one gigabyte, but that's what I had hooked to it uh, for storage. That was it, the iOmega Jazz Drive. It only held one gigabyte of storage, but um, it was better than using the floppy disk. You can save everything to it. Okay, so that's what I had. I had the MPC with the jazz drive hooked up to it, and it was a removable cartridge, just to let you know. This is the removable cartridge, one gigabyte, and press that button, the, uh, the hard drive pops out. So it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And I had it hooked up through SCSI. That's the cable that plugs into the back. So I had that. Okay, so let's go back. So I had the MPC 3000. I had the MPC 3000 for years. And then... Um, I, uh, did not have the MPC 4000, but, uh, eventually I ended up getting the MPC, the next one, the MPC 5000. Now mine was similar to this, but mine had a few, a little bit of dark colored designs on there. Um, but I had the MPC 5000, had the four, um, faders here. They didn't move. They weren't automated, but I had this, it re could record onto CD um, so it, it was nice, but I didn't have this for long. Um, and that, go and that's going to bring me to why I stopped buying NPCs. Every, uh, NPCs are great for making beats. Great. But when I was using NPCs, and it's not, uh, today, this was back in the day. When I was using NPCs, uh, I would always get to what I would call a brick wall. I would make a beat. And then er, that was it. I couldn't do anything else with it. It sounded like a beat made on a drum machine. If you sampled a lot and did whatever, it sounded cool, but it just didn't go to that next step. It sounded like the beginning step of making uh, music. So uh, you could just make beats. And the problem with having a machine that just make beats, you keep adding more and more elements to fill it up because you don't, you don't, plug a microphone into this and start singing into it. Could you? Probably. Uh, it didn't have like a mic input on it, but you could probably get a, you know, work around it or something like that. But uh, it, 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 it uh, could record vocals and, you know, you could do whatever. But it wasn't, it was just made to make beats. So you would, when you have a machine like this, you just constantly keep adding elements, adding elements, and then you would have a beat, but it would be so full, you can't fit anything else in there. And anything else would be keyboards vocals, this, that, and a third. So when I had this, I was running into that brick wall and it, well, I was running into that brick wall with the MPC as well. Now, when I had the MPC, I also had a computer and I had a uh, Cubase. So I would make a beat and then go into Cubase and then start doing more. So every time I had an MPC, I would start on the MPC, bring it into Cubase, sync it up to Cubase, whatever, and then start doing more. But I found myself using it and then boom, staying most of the time in the computer. Starting it here, staying most of the time in the computer. And that's probably what you're supposed to do. That's fine. But when I had this MPC 5000, it was like the computer was so powerful that I found myself not using it. Okay? 
And uh, so I ended up getting rid of it. And it was so long ago, I don't even know how I got rid of it. I don't remember selling it to anybody, bringing it back. I probably brought it back to the store and got something else. So I eventually got rid of it. And um, I went years without having a drum machine. I would make the beat in the computer. I had keyboards. I would play the beats on the keyboards. But as far as sampling and chopping them up, I was doing them inside a, cube, uh, a computer. Now, I was using Cubase for a while. And Cubase is almost like Pro Tools where you have to know where you're going when you're making music. And we're not even going to get into that because that's another video. But I stopped using Cubase and tried Ableton. And I loved Cubase. I had all the controllers and everything. I loved Cubase. But everybody was using Ableton. And I had Ableton since Ableton 1.0. It was a free version. I went to Sam Ash and they were showing off Ableton. It was some free thing they were getting, showing off, free thing they were doing showing off Ableton. And I looked at it and I looked at it and I was like, that thing is ugly, ugly. That's ugly. Cubase was beautiful, shiny. It had um, a color, beautiful rainbow colors and stuff. It was just beautiful. You look at Ableton and you just like it looks like a gray chalkboard. I thought it was ugly. So I took the free disc home, installed it, played around with it for a while. I was like, no, 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 no. I can't. Cubase, Cubase, Cubase. So I'm making beats on Cubase, and the wall that I was running into was you have to know where you're going because you create it linearly, uh, literally. You create it linearly, linear. You, you, Cubase is a linear recording DAW, so you have to go from A to B. You have to know where you're going. You can't just come up with ideas and stick them together. You can, but, you know, that's not really how the program was meant to be used. They started adding that feature in later. But, uh, again, I'm into the, the, the house music, the dance music. So every time I look at a magazine, I see Ableton. Ableton, Ableton, Ableton. And I had Ableton. I had it. Um... As a matter of fact, I, I, I owned it. They, I had it. I didn't just have the free version. Or maybe I did. I don't remember. But I had Ableton. And um, I uh, said, you know what? I was probably off a vacation or something like that. I said, I'm going to sit down and learn Ableton. I want to see what this program is about. Why are everybody using this ugly thing? I started using Ableton. And I would say within two hours, because I was learning it, an hour and a half, I was like, oh, I saw something. It wasn't a linear doll that you had. Okay, play here and just play all the way to the end. Play here, play all the way to the end. Add something here, add something here. It wasn't linear. It was come up with ideas and then stitch those ideas together. And that's how my brain worked. Okay? So... I said, okay, I see how this works. And it just started to click. And I started to use that more than Cubase. I still held on to Cubase, kept paying for the upgrades, but I was in Ableton 99% of the time. And my thought process was create it in Ableton, stem it out, bring it into Cubase, mix it down. That was my thought process. But Ableton was just so perfect, you never had to leave Ableton. You never had to leave Ableton. You didn't have to stem it out. You could mix in it. You never had to leave Ableton. So I stopped uh, doing Cubase, uh, using Cubase. I think version six uh, was the last one I had. Um, they had a Cubase SX. Uh, so I, I think that was the last version I have. Could have been Cubase five, I don't remember. But I remember Cubase SX, I had that one. So, the reason why I'm telling you uh, why I have a push because of Ableton. So, I started using Ableton, and then years later, Ableton came out with this. When I saw this, I was like, I gotta have it. Gotta have it. So, I ordered the uh, Ableton push, got it, used it, and it just works perfectly with Ableton. Okay? So, now that's going to bring me to this. The MPC is an awesome instrument. If you're doing hip hop, boom bap hip hop, sampling records, it's an awesome, awesome instrument. This is why. You sample into it and you can just, it has a whole bunch of knobs and stuff like that. So you can access everything quickly and get the sound that you want very quickly. Okay. Um, the only problem with it, like I said, is 
I hit that brick wall and I end up in a computer and stay in a computer. But today, the NPC, you can kind of stay in that NPC and stay there. Uh, but the, the computer has more processing power, so you can use better plugins and so on and so forth. So that's why I stay uh, in the computer instead of getting a uh, NPC today. Okay? So NPC is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You're not going to go wrong having an NPC. Now, when it comes to the Ableton Push, a lot of people try to compare the Ableton Push to an NPC. And that's where people go wrong. The NPC and the Ableton Push are not the same. They even came out with a standalone version for Ableton Push. And I still, to this day, say they are not the same. They are not. If you were doing a live performance where you singing and change tracks and play stuff live with Ableton and you use an Ableton push, that's what Ableton standalone should be for most of the time. Because if I had a standalone unit, I would go sit on my couch and make beats instead of sitting here. And then when I'm ready, come into the studio and plug it in, plug it up. So I would get an Ableton standalone, but I don't need an Ableton standalone, okay? Um, uh, I will eventually get the Ableton Push 3. It might be a standalone, it might not. But an Ableton uh, Push 3 standalone is something that's needed on the market today because you can really go on stage with something like this and do your thing with no problem, no problem. And you don't have to have it hooked up to Ableton. So you don't have to have this and a laptop nearby. You could just go with Ableton, okay? Now, um, with an MPC uh, uh, in the studio, I would create something and then I'm going to end up in Ableton anyway, so that's why I don't do the MPC. But if you were just making beats and you're a beat maker, you have no problems. You're, you're not going to have any problems with an MPC 5000 or 5000, MPC X. Okay? Um, if you are a beat maker and you use Ableton, Fruity Loop, so on and so forth, you already have a computer. So if you have a computer and you don't want to spend a lot of money on another piece of hardware because you're going to end up in a computer already, you might want to look at something like an Ableton, okay? It can sample just like the MPC can, but if you have a computer, that's when you might want to think a good computer, not some old um, computer that your mother gave you um, that doesn't work anymore. Okay, uh, or that's slow. You know, a good computer. You don't need the fastest computer, you just need a decent computer, okay? Um, so if you already have a computer and you're making beats in a computer, instead of getting an MPC, you might wanna look into an Ableton push. Now I'm gonna say that be only if you get use Ableton. If you use another program, there's no reason to really look into Ableton because then you'll be talking about switching programs. If you're happy in Fruity Loops, use Fruity Loops by the Fruity Loops keyboard. Um, if you're happy in Fruity Loops, but you and know a, a, a lot of people that use an MPC and they use it and you can go and collaborate with them, so on and so forth, get yourself an MPC. Don't go and think, oh, I gotta get this because he said so. No, look at what you need and get what you think you need not because of what somebody else tells you, okay? Um, unless they had both units and they're sitting here telling you, you do this? Nah, my friend, I would, I would push more towards this. Looks cool, looks cool, but you kind of want to get exactly what you need, okay? So um, that's how I got into an Ableton push, okay? Now, let me tell you what this is. This is not a drum machine. It's not. It's a controller. You have to look at this like uh, a mini keyboard. That's the way you look at this, okay? This talks to the computer, okay? That's what this is. So when you're in here sampling and cutting without the standalone version, you're actually sampling cutting in there. So instead of using this to sample, cut, move everything around, you use this. Instead of playing on a keyboard, you know, uh, so, uh, sounds into uh, the computer, you know, you play this. This, you can play chords. You can play notes. You play this, okay? 
Um, you can kind of do that with the MPC too, but it's not the same thing. This is more like a keyboard. That's like a drum machine playing keyboard sounds. This is like a controller um, playing the sounds that's in the computer. So it can sample just like an MPC. All right, I'm going to show you that. It can, um, uh, remember, it's a controller, so the computer's doing the sampling. Ableton's doing the sampling. But you can maneuver just like the MPC. You can play notes in it just like you had a keyboard. I can't play keyboards, so I stopped buying keyboards because I can't do this. But on here, I can easily play sounds. I can play chords. I can do this. I can take out notes that aren't in the key of the song, so I can press blindly and it's still going to sound good if the notes are, are, are if the notes that aren't in the key of the song are on these pads it's just like playing a keyboard when you don't know how to play keyboard okay but you can say push i only want the notes that are in the key of the song it does it and then you can just press the keys and come up with melodies just by listening to it okay you can't do that with a regular keyboard okay um so that's what this does it plays uh, I'm sorry, it has transport control, so you can play, record, stop. Um, it does a lot of other stuff, too, but basically, that's what it is. We're not going to get too deep into this. Uh, maybe I'll have another video about the push, but that's what the push is. Again, the MPC is a, a, a dedicated drum machine, and it can do a lot. You can record vocals into it today. You can chop it up. It has a beautiful, oh, you know what? We didn't even look at the MPC. It has a beautiful, beautiful screen. Uh, I saw somebody using it the other day. It was touchscreen. Didn't know that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. has the knobs. Um, and if I had to make a choice between that red one and this one, I would get this one. That's just me. This thing just looks beautiful. But um, you're not going to go wrong with either one. I would just get, uh, do your research, look at both. If you're going to spend most of your time in your computer and you use Ableton, I would be looking into the push um, because you can do exactly the same thing. Uh, if you are just a beat maker and you sell beats, you just beats. You don't want to record vocals. You don't want to do none of this. You don't want to be inside the computer. You want to make a beat, sell it to somebody, let them bring it to the studio and be done with it. Then I would go ahead and get uh, an MPC if you're hip hop, so on and so forth. Um, you could do house on there. People have done house on it. I've done house on it. But um, it just really depends on what uh, the software you're using. Okay. So I, 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 let's, let's also, let's check it out. Let's see what this thing costs. This thing costs $2,500. All right. There's cheaper NPCs out there, but we're not going to compare a push to something, uh, some cheaper NPC. It doesn't make any sense. So I compared the push to the top of the line uh, NPC. It's $2,500. So this thing is awesome. It's beautiful. Um, I would love to play with one. And, uh, you know, if I went over to somebody's house and they had it, I would be on it, playing around, seeing what it could do. Would I ever get it? Probably not because of the way I work with Ableton. Um, I don't, when I'm in the studio, I don't have time to play. I have to create and move on to the next thing. Create, move on to the next thing. Do something, move on to the next thing. Okay. So, um, but I would love to play around with it. So, uh, let's see. So the Ableton standalone version costs uh two thousand dollars all right the regular push without the standalone is out of stock so if you wanted to push you have to go for the standalone version okay so let's jump into some examples on how to chop samples using push okay the first thing we're going to do to sample and chop up beats like if you're on an mpc is come over here to where it says add track press add track come down here to where it says audio track. These knobs up here are touch sensitive, so we only want to come to the second knob and touch it. It goes to default track, and then you come over here to where it says load, and you hit load track. Next thing we want to do is press mix until you see the input output mix, and you want to make sure that the channel that you're going to be recording on has the channel where your input is coming through. My loopback feature is on 7 and 8, so I pick 7 and 8. The next thing you want to do is come over here to the track that you're going to record on and hold and press it. And if you look, a circle appears here. That circle 
means record arm. If I turn it on and then turn it off, now I'm not able to record on this track. Now my record arm is enabled. And if you come and look at Ableton, you'll see the same thing. If I press it, it goes off, press it again, it turns on. So now we're in record arm. Next thing we're gonna come down is come down here and press session. This highlights the slots that we can start recording our loops in. The next thing you wanna do is play your sample. Hit record. Hit play stop when you're done. You can press play here to hear what you recorded. It sounds exactly like the original sample. The next thing we're gonna do is come over here to where it says convert. Then we're gonna select simpler. Now what that did was it created a brand new audio track with our sample on it, and it put it in a device called a simpler. Now in Ableton, a simpler is a simple form of a sampler. Ableton also has a device called a sampler, which is a more complex form of a sampler. So just for this and this demonstration, we're gonna be using the simpler for now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press note mode, and then you can come in here and play your sample. The next thing we're gonna do is come up here and press simpler, and then we're gonna press global. Now this is gonna adjust the global parameters of our sample. So if I wanted to, let's just say raise the volume. I think that's good enough for now. Now also if I press hard, if I press lightly, the velocity is affected. So if I turn this all the way down to zero, now it doesn't matter how hard I press it, it comes out at the same volume. Now if you turn it up to 100, soft, hard. So we're gonna turn this down to zero because we want it all to be the same volume. Oh, it's up to you. Now we're gonna go back to main. Now inside of main, we have parameters that we can set. We can set, we can zoom in to our sample if we wanted to. Okay, we have a loop start. Okay, so we can tell the NPC where to start our loop. And if you have to zoom in, you could. Okay, and now if you press here, now we're at the loop end. We can tell the Ableton push where the loop is gonna end. In the mode area, we're gonna switch this to slicing. And what that does is it slices the loop up automatically inside of Ableton. All of these pads now has a loop that was chopped up automatically. Now you can adjust the sensitivity to get less chop points, okay? Okay. But since my loop is so long, what I'm going to do is increase that sensitivity and just come back. I just want to get one loop. Oops, turn down the sensitivity, turn that off. And I'm gonna tell Ableton where to stop looping, how long I want my loop. Okay, over here. Okay. 
This way we won't get so many chop points. I'm only gonna be taking a few hits and crashes inside there. Okay. Bring this to slicing, turn up the sensitivity, and then it's gonna start chopping the beats for us. The higher their sensitivity, the more slices you get. The lower your sensitivity, the less slices you get. Zoom in, and let's take a look at what we got. Once we're done with all the chops, and we're happy with that, just to let you know, all these yellow have certain chops on them. And that's the beautiful of having a, pad, uh, a machine with this many pads. So once we're done with our chops, the next thing we're gonna do is come over here and press convert again. And then we're gonna put all of these in a drum rack. Now, every single chop has its own parameters. So if you wanted to come up here and adjust the transpose just on this snare, You could, but everything else stays the same. Come back over to transpose, raise it. Everything else stays the same. So each sample has their own parameter that you can adjust. And so you can see it's easy to start chopping up samples on an Ableton push. It just depends on how you want to work. And then once you're done chopping up your sample and creating your beat, only thing you have to do is go inside of Ableton and finish your production. Okay, so we're gonna do that again with another beat. So the first thing you want to do is go to add track, go to audio track, go to default track, and then hit load. Press mix, go to your input channel, make sure it's on your input channel. Again, mine is loop back, press and hold, record arm, make sure that circle turns on or look at your Ableton to make sure the record arm is armed on the track that you're about to record on. Press that session. Then we come to the sample, play sample. Press record. Press play stop to stop recording. Stop sample, playback. Press play here. So we can hear what our sample sounds like. It sounds exactly like we recorded it. Now from here, we go to this button over here, convert, go to simpler. Now we're gonna come over to note mode and then you can play your sample. Now we're gonna come over here and press simpler. We're gonna go into global mode and turn off our Volume sensitivity. Oh, we're gonna adjust our volume. Inside of Ableton, we're gonna make sure we get it to a decent volume just to manipulate it. All right, that's good enough for me. So in this screen, we're gonna adjust our sample start. And that's gonna be here. And if you need to get in, you can zoom in. Zoom in even further if we wanted. And that should be good enough. And we're gonna go for our sample end. Let's zoom out. Now, just to be clear, in this screen, we're only telling Ableton what is our sample length. We're not trying to get it perfect. We're just telling it what we wanna get rid of. 
for cropping, basically. All right, and that's going to be the end of our sample here. All right, so there's our sample right there. Now we come up to slicing mode, put it to sliping, slicing, and then when we're done with our chops, now we're gonna hit convert one more time, and then we're gonna hit drum rack. Now, if you noticed in the beginning, we had more than 16 pads of sounds. So inside of Ableton, if you come and look over here to the right, there are more than 16 pads. You see when I press, the yellow square represents the sample that I'm pressing. If I come up here and press this other 16, now I'm on a total different bank of 16. Now I'm on my original 16. I'm not going to kill your ears by trying to make a hip hop beat, but I'm pretty sure all of you can see how easy that it can be done using the Ableton Push. Okay, so as you can see, there's multiple ways of sampling when you're using Ableton and Ableton Push. Um, you can sample just like the MPC, the MPC can sample just like the Push. So it really doesn't matter which way you go when it comes to buying this or the MPC, it's just whatever fits and works for you. Um, I would just recommend if you have a lot of friends that use a certain product and they swear by it, maybe you might want to go that route, like I said, because it helps when it comes to collaborating and stuff like that. But uh, if you um, have Ableton already and you have a push, you see you don't necessarily need a separate drum machine to sample just like if you were sampling on an MPC. Now, as far as sound quality, this is another thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way. When it comes to sound quality, once you get it in the computer, you can make it sound like anything you want. You can make it sound more grungy, more dirty. You can make it hit harder. That's what the computer is for. That's why I gravitate more towards using the push in Ableton as uh, opposed to a standalone drum machine. You can make it sound any way you want once it gets inside that computer. All right, I think that's it. I think the video is long enough. So if you guys have any questions for me, please put it in the comments. I'll go ahead and answer that for you. And um, if you need any mixing, mastering, or any kind of production work, definitely hit me up, let me know. Other than that, until next time, peace.